Hello firearms friends, Joel Colander here for Rock Island Auction Company, here to talk to you about one of the US military guns in our upcoming February 14th through 17th Sporting Collector Firearms Auction. Yes, that's four days long. For those of you keeping track at home, it's gonna be over 7,300 guns in four days. If you like gun shows, this is the biggest gun show you've never been to. Uh, it's why we encourage you to come because there's uh, plenty of uh, everyday guns and there's wonderful pieces of collector memorabilia like this. And we're gonna go into why this is such a prize. But of course, it's US military as we already referenced. This is a Savage 1907 trials pistol. So like most Savage 1907s, uh, when they were in the commercial market in our chamber in 32, and I think around 1915, they introduced one in 380 ACP. For the US military in 1907, they were chambered them in 45, and you would know it right away looking at it. This is a substantially beefier version than your standard 1907 and 32. Uh, we're not gonna go into the full history of the 1907 trials pistols. One, we've kind of already done it. We have a video called Almost Famous, which details the history. Two, if you really wanna get into some of the fantastic history, there are books on the subject. Um, if you're looking specifically on the Savage, Mr. Brower's book, Savage Pistols, goes into wonderful detail. If you're looking for the full history of, of the Colt, the Savage, and some of the other finalists, the Luger most notably, uh, you can check out the Meadows book, fantastic information, the correspondence between the Ordnance Department and the manufacturers, like it is that detailed. Uh, so we won't go into the full history, uh, but I'll give you the rundown. And the rundown is in, of course, 1907, the US military hosts pistol trials. Savage enters, a lot of other people enter, Colt, Luger. Um, and you get to the end, and they go through various iterations. So from 1907, they're evolving. Colt, you see the 1907, the 1909, the 1910, eventually the 1911. And even those, there's variations in those. Almost very few are the same. Savage is, is not immune to this as well. They're constantly making improvements along the way because they want this military contract. Uh, of course, on the Ides of March 1911, that's March 15th, uh, you famously end up with the Savage pitted up against John Moses Browning's 1911 from Colt, and they face off in a 6,000 round trial, which is a pretty ridiculous number of rounds, uh, but fantastic for, for anything, for military tests and for a story. Uh, the Savage notably uh, shows about 31 malfunctions, I think five or six parts breakdowns. And the Colt, of course, famously does not suffer any. And so the Colt with zero malfunctions and 6,000 rounds is you know, adopted by the Ordnance Department and we see it for decades to come. Now the Savage trial pistols, I mean, besides having an epic placement in like US military sidearm history, are rare birds. Savage only manufactured 288 in total for US military trials. And you think 288, well, that's quite a few. Well, think about how rare a Singer 1911A1 is. You know, there's only 500 of those made, and those, a Singer 1911, I mean, we've, so we've sold them for six figures here at Rock Island Auction Company. Uh, granted, they did see a very high attrition rate because they were issued to, to pilots, and all these were mainly sent to the uh, US facilities for trial and testing, but still, uh, almost half the number of, of these 1907 Savages are produced than, than Singer 1911A1. So it, it puts things in perspective a little bit. These are rare, rare treats. Of course, after the trial, what do you do with them? Um, the Ordnance Department, you know, they're like, well, we should sell these and get our money back that we paid to front the cost to Savage. Um, but they didn't want to pay to refinish them. So the US government was like, well, we'll just sell them as is. Long story short, Tried to not get into the long story, but it's so hard with such a such a fascinating history behind these guns. Um, Savage buys back 181 of them after the trial for six dollars and fifty cents a piece. That's 10% of the price they originally sold them to the U.S. government. Now, part of you may think, "Oh, that's a pretty good deal." It's also a little bit of a, a kick having to buy back your own failed design that wasn't accepted at the trials. Uh, Savage buys these back. They're going to uh, refinish them, refurbish them, repair them. I mean, these are involved in trials. They were not treated daintily uh, by the US military. And then Savage is gonna sell them after they bought them back for, for such a low price. Um, and here's where we get into this particular Savage 1907. Um, Brower in his book, first of all, this is from the Brower collection. Now you may remember we had an exquisite collection of Brower's uh, Savages 
in our December premiere that just came. Just a fantastic variety, high condition, high art, and of course some trials pistols as well uh, in this last December. So this is a continuation of the Brower collection. That should be cool enough. If it's good enough for Mr. Brower's collection, it's good enough for yours. He wrote the book on it. He's a noted authority on Savage Pistols. I mean, when you literally write the book on something, it's hard to argue with that. Now, Brower details six different variations of the pistol. Now, this doesn't include, of course, the, the numerous variations and improvements that occurred throughout the trials and testing period. Uh, these are more like, you know, he manufactured 200 for testing, and then they had to manufacture another several dozen to replace items and, and repairs. There's six different portions. Those six different segments of collecting of these Savage 45s happen to tell us just about when they were manufactured. Now we can flip this around and we can tell, uh, first of all, it's a huge Savage 45, uh, much, much larger than their 32 caliber retail counterparts. Uh, even has the nice little lanyard ring on the bottom, kind of telltale, which once you drop the magazine, if you're not using that, it does flip back inside nicely. Very cool. Just a there's so many neat things about this design, um, even over the Colt that, that of course eventually won thanks to its reliability and probably part of Colt's um, expertise in, in metallurgy helped win the day. But coming back to where this one was placed, you notice on the top rib, all we have here is caliber 45 and it's right in front of the ejection port, pardon me, caliber dot 45 and believe it or not, that's important when determining which of the six variations it is. That tells us that this gun was one of the 181 purchased by Savage after the trials for $6.50. It's funny to think about what this cost at one time. Uh, went back to Savage for repair and refurbishment and then was sold as retail. So you know exactly where this Savage 1907 has been. Uh, it's serial number 208 and all this stuff is so well documented, both in Meadows' book and again in Brower's book, you know when it was shipped to the government, when it came back, when it was sold. It's just the phenomenal history. So you have the history in the US military trials of 1907. Um, what a hole filler if you're a US Marshal sidearms collector, if you're a US military collector in general, a Savage 1907 should be pretty high on the list. Um, you also know exactly where this is because serial number 208 is featured twice in Brower's book. So it came from his collection. It was enough of a representative example for him to feature twice in the pages of his book. It's good enough for his collection. It's good enough for his book. And it has the US trials history behind it. You, you got a pretty solid addition to a collection with this Savage 1907 in 45 ACP. Now we've sold these in our, in our premier auctions, the pristine, gorgeous versions, upwards of $30,000 more commonly around 20, and, and, and a lot of times in between there, sometimes a little bit less, again, depending largely on condition. Here's an example in our sporting collector auction, estimated between $6,500 and $9,500. Now for most of us, setting up a collection is a good chunk of change, but if you've been dying for a Savage 1907 and 45, and you're not willing to pay 20 or $30,000, maybe you can't, but that's the one you need for your collection, you can add a piece of US military history to your collection for under $10,000 and it's, and it's a significant piece. So again, it's not a pristine piece, but that doesn't make it any less of an important piece for US military collection. It's one of the fantastic reasons you need to look through the items listing on rockislandauction.com for that February 14th through 17th Sporting Collector Firearms Auction. You can search listings for your favorite for hidden gems like this. Uh, keep an eye out for the videos. We'll have more of these sort of surprising genres in this sale. You can just find it a heck of a price point. Thanks for watching everybody. Till next time, keep your powder dry.